You imagine from five channel again review this. This is reviewing knowledge as well as we must have. No question? Okay, let us stop to get him. Tomorrow we will be back again. Sadhu, Sadhu, Understanding that that is abandoning is knowledge in the sense of giving up. 
At this point, the meditator must pass current to the sun, the courage are set, conscious, manifestation, and browsing may cause of every materiality and every mentality and their causes. For example, he must thus try to see materiality, rupa, as the courage of constantly changing in different ways, rupa, Feeling has the characteristic of being felt, etc. This type of contemplation is called full understanding as the know. This is the knowledge of defining mentality and materiality. Dhamma, Rupa, Prachita, Jnana, and the knowledge of descending cause and condition, Sitya, Prika, Jnana. See, these are three types of knowledge, page 25, <coughs> 25 and 26. The meditator must contemplate those mentality and materiality and their causes as impermanent nature, safari, yoga, and no self anatta. For example, materiality is impermanent, feeling is impermanent, etc. This type of contemplation is called full understanding as investigation. This is the knowledge of comprehension, samasana jnana, and the knowledge of rise and fall, udhya bhya jnana. See the 16 types of knowledge, page 25, 26. Hmm? The meditator must not try to see only the dissolution of passing away of those mentality and materiality in their causes. He must try to contemplate them as impermanent, suffering, non-self. This type of contemplation abandons the perception of permanence, etc. This understanding is called full understanding as abandoning. See, from the knowledge of the solution, number five. Hmm? Bring on Yana up to the knowledge of conformity, number 12. Anuloma Yana. So see, the 16 types of knowledge, page 25 and 26. The plane of full understanding as the law is from the elimination of the formations up to the discernment of force and condition. For in this interval, the penetration of the specific characteristics of phenomena, that is, mentality and materiality in the causes, predominates. See, number one and two knowledges. The plane of full understanding as investigation extends from comprehension by groups up to contemplation of right and fall. For in this interval, the penetration of the general characteristics, empowerment, suffering, and nurture predominates. See, number three and number four knowledge. The play of full understanding as abandoning extends from the contemplation of the solution onwards. For from there onwards, the seven contemplations that effect the abandoning of the perception of permanence, etc., predominate thus. Number one, contemplating formations as impermanent, immediate abandons the perception of permanence. Number two, contemplating them as painful, he abandons the perception of pleasure. Number three, contemplating them as not self. He abandons the perception of self. Number four, because of, because of contemplating in this way, the meditator relinquishes attachment. And number five, because of this passionate, so he abandons the lady. Number six, when attachment fades away, he abandons greed. Number seven, because of the cessation of greed, he abandons ignorance and craving the beginning links of dependent origination. Number eight, relinquishing ignorance and craving, he abandons grasping that is clinging. 
All other Chinese soldiers, every Chinese soldier. I want to explain this soldier only because of this reason I try to begin with the 60 types of knowledge and 3 types of food and understanding. What is the reason? Please read. Because without directly knowing and fully understanding the all, mentality, materiality, and their causes, without developing this passion to us, it mentality, materiality, and their causes, and abandoning it, mentality, materiality, and their causes, one is incapable of destroying suffering. That is, he cannot escape from the honor river and he cannot realize nirvana. Because by directly knowing and fully understanding the all, mentality, materiality, and their causes, by developing this passion to what is mentality, materiality, and their causes, and abandoning it, mentality, materiality, and their causes, one is incapable of satisfying suffering. So number one, yeah, because without directly knowing, this is referring full understanding as the no nyata prayer. Maybe Nama Rupa Prichita Jana and Picha Priga Jana. And full understanding the all. This is number two. Full understanding as investigating Tirana Prija. This is Samasana Jana and Udya Bhya Jana. Full understanding by developing this passion towards it and abandoning it. This is referring the full understanding as abandoning Mahana Prina. So, while practicing Vipassana, if the meditator do not understand all mentality, all materiality and their causes by three types of full understanding, one cannot escape from the round of rebirth, one cannot realize Nibbana. This is the Buddha's teaching, this is very important. So if you want to practice Vipassana, you must try to understand all mentality as well as all materiality and their causes. Then you must, all materiality, all mentality and their causes are called Sankara formation. These Sankara formations are the object of Vipassana. You must contemplate them as nature. Why? As long as they arise, they perish away, they pass away. So they are nature and permanent. They are always oppressed by rising and passing away, so they are dukkha suffering. There is no permanent entity, permanent substance in them, so they are another non-self. Such type of contemplation is called vipassana. So, if you want to practice real vipassana, then you must try to understand ultimate materiality, ultimate mentality, and they are called Not partially, all, all ultimate materiality, all ultimate mentality, and they are called because of this reason, the Atta Salini commentary, this is first commentary in Vidama, explains the meaning of Vipassana. Anichati Vasena, Vui Dehi Agarehi Dhamme Pasadehi Vipassana. The inside knowledge which contemplates all mentality all materiality and their causes as nature and permanent suffering, as dukkha suffering, as another no self. Such type of contemplation is called vipassana. So if you want to practice vipassana, number one, you should have enough. You must understand ultimate materiality as well as ultimate mentality. Then you must try to understand by your own direct knowledge their causes. Without understanding ultimate materiality, without understanding ultimate mentality, without understanding their causes, 
if you break this Vipassana, that Vipassana is just superficial or not real Vipassana. If you want to break this real Vipassana, here is one important thing. What is this? Samadhin Bhikkhu Bhaveta Samadhi Dho Bhikkhu Bhikkhu Yadha Buddha Bhajanadi Bhikkhu develop concentration. A Bhikkhu who has concentrated mind understands the Dhamma as the really us. This is the Buddha's teaching in the Sitka Samyutta Samadhi Sutta. So, what does he understand as it really is? He understands as it really is. This is the noble truth of suffering, Dukkha Sitya. He understands as it really is. This is the noble truth of the origin of suffering, Sumuriya Sitya. He understands as it really is. This is the noble truth of the cessation of suffering, Nirodha Sitya. He understands as it really is. This is the noble truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. Dukkha Nirodha Gamini Pradipada Ariya Seja. So, for realizing of four noble truth, you should have enough concentration. When the concentrated mind, if you practice to understand four noble truth, it is impossible. Why? The concentrated mind can produce a strong, powerful light. That light is called the light of wisdom. With the assistance of the light of wisdom, if you try to understand ultimate materiality, ultimate mentality and their causes by your own direct knowledge, it is possible. If there is no the light of wisdom, if you practice to understand ultimate materiality, ultimate mentality, and their causes by your own correct knowledge. It is impossible. Because of this reason, what is the noble truth of suffering? Sankhi Dina Pichu Padana Kandaduka. In brief, Pat Rigas of Kringa are called the noble truth of suffering. What are Pat Kringa the clinging aggregate of materiality, the clinging aggregate of feeling, the clinging aggregate of perception, the clinging aggregate of formation, and the clinging aggregate of consciousness. All together they are five aggregates. The clinging aggregate of materiality is materiality rupa. The clinging aggregate of Feeling, the clinging aggregate of perception, the clinging aggregate of formation, and the clinging aggregate of consciousness. These four clinging aggregates are called mentality. So five aggregates and mentality and materiality are same. They have same meaning. So if you want to understand ultimate mentality and ultimate materiality, you should have enough concentration. With the concentrated mind, if you try to understand ultimate materiality and ultimate mentality, it is impossible. Then, the second noble truth is the noble truth of this origin of suffering. In brief, this is the dependent origination. If we summarize the dependent origination, there are five causes and five effects only. Five causes are ignorance, craving, ignorance, avoja, craving, jana, lingui, ubajana, volition information, sankara, and karma. All together, these five causes are called the noble truth of the, or the origin of suffering. Samuriya Sitya. Because of the rising of Samuriya Sitya, Dukha Sitya rise. Samuriya Sitya is cause, Dukha Sitya is effect. Because of the Samuriya Sitya, Dukha Sitya rise. Then Dukha Sitya must be 
Madiriya body and Madiriya body. Why? I had already explained because hmm? without understanding by three types of full understanding all mentality, material and their causes, you cannot escape from the round or rebirth. You cannot realize nibbana. This is total effect. Total effect. Because of this reason, Venerable Sari Buddha explains in this case. In this case, Kaya means not only materiality body, but also mental body also. Why? Without understanding all mentality and materiality, by three types of full understanding, you cannot escape from the all or rebirth. This is the Buddha's teaching. Because of this reason, Venerable Sari Buddha explains, in this case, you must try to understand all mentality and all materiality. This is number one. Hmm? These four types of knowledge are called the knowledge of defining mentality and materiality. Nama, Rupa, Parichita, Jana. Let's try to see 60 types of knowledge, page 25-26. Hmm? How to develop materiality meditation? In Samatha, there are 40 Samatha meditation subjects. However, in Vipassana, there are only two meditation subjects. Materiality meditation, Rupa Kamatana, and Mentality meditation, Arupa Kamatana. When expounding materiality meditation, the Buddha always teaches four elements meditation. Four elements meditation, plural form. Hmm? In brief or in details, now we would like to discuss about the four element meditation in brief way. The Buddha taught the brief method in the Mahasati Prana subject. Oh. A bhikkhu reviews this very body, however, it be placed or disposed, as consisting of just elements. Thus, there are in this body just the earth element, the water element, the fire element, and the wind element. What is the earth element? Heartless, roughness, heaviness, softness, smoothness, lightness, lightness. This is earth element. What is water element? Flowing in cohesion. What is fire element? Heat and cold. What is wind element? Supporting in cohesion. So all together, how many characteristics are there? Twelve characteristics. Hmm? To develop, the, so if you want to understand ultimate materiality, how you should practice? How you shall begin? Four elements meditation. Without practicing four elements, four elements meditation, you cannot understand ultimate materiality. So if you want to understand ultimate materiality, you must obey the Buddha's instruction. Buddha always instructs for, for clear understanding of ultimate materiality. Four elements meditation. In brief or in detail. So if you want to understand animate materiality, you must try to practice four elements meditation. Without practicing four elements meditation systematically, if you try to understand animate materiality, it is impossible. Do you have enough faith in the Buddha? Do you have? Yes, if you have enough faith in the Buddha as well as his teaching, then you must obey his teaching. Do you want to obey? This is very important. Hmm? Without practicing four elements meditation systematically, you cannot understand element materiality. No, it is. <coughs> Many meditators, they do not practice systematically for elements meditation. Therefore, they do not understand element materiality. At the time, what is their opinion? 
they say the Buddha teaches this argument, believe the argument, majority, this number of Rupa, and towering the Deva war only. For Deva only, not for human beings. This is their argument. According to their argument, if we summarize their argument, the eh? noble truth of suffering, this is ultimate mentality and eh? materiality, factoring and regression. Hmm? So, human, there are also human noble ones, like Venerable Kundinya, Venerable Sariputta, Venerable Mahamoglana, etc. They also penetrate for noble truth. While penetrating the, these four noble truths, they also penetrate the noble truth of suffering, that is the clinging, the clinging, the five clinging aggregate of materiality, feeling, perception, original formations, and consciousness. They penetrate five aggregates. This is the noble truth of suffering. What are five aggregates? Mentality and materiality. Then Devas, there are also noble ones in the Deva world as well as in the Brahma world. These Devas and Brahmas also venerate Purnava truth. Among Purnava truth, there is number one is the noble truth of Safari, Dukkha Sita. So Devas also penetrate Dukkha Sita. Human beings, noble ones also penetrate Dukkha Sita. So, whether these two types of noble truth are same or different, how do you think? When is boundary put some some more? Dhamma Chekka Bodhana Sutta. Such an emotion of the wheel of Dhamma. At the end of Dhamma Chekka Bodhana Sutta, Venerable Kundinya penetrates for noble truth. In the same way, 80, Koti, <coughs> 80 billion Brahmas also penetrate for noble truth. Ah, same hmm? Uncountable Devas also penetrate for noble truth. Are they same for noble truth or different for noble truth? Same for noble truth because Sota is same Sota, only one Sota. Which is soda? Dhamma Chaka Bhutana Soda. So same meaning. So Devas also penetrate this phone over truth. Brahmas also penetrate this phone over truth. Penarima Kuninya also penetrate this phone over truth. So they have the same meaning. No different meaning. According to their opinion, Buddha teaches this mentality, materiality, Nama Rupa, and Deva wa only. In human wa, Buddha never teach this number rupa. This is their argument. According to their argument, Venerable Kuninja also penetrates the noble truth of Safari Yoga Sita. Brahmas and Devas also penetrate the noble truth of Safari Yoga Sita. So they have different, they must have different. Do you understand? So, because of this reason, if you do not practice poor animist meditation system, you cannot understand ultimate materiality. So if you want to understand ultimate materiality, then you must practice poor animist meditation system. To develop this meditation, you must learn how to design each of the 12 paradigms one at a time. Usually the beginner is first of the characteristics is easier to discern and later the more difficult one. They are usually taught in this order. Pushy, hardness, roughness, heaviness, subody, softness, smoothness, largeness, heat, coldness, cohesion, flowing. Each characteristic must be discerned in first one place in the body and then throughout the body. For example, pushing, if you want to understand pushing, while breathing in, your breath push 
then go into the head. You can follow now in this way. Then you can understand pushing. If you see pushing inside your head, then you should try to disable pushing inside the whole head. Then you should try to descend throughout your body. So from one place to another, you should try to follow all to, throughout the body. You should try to understand pushing. In the same way, hardness, roughness, heaviness, softness, uh, smoothing, softness, smoothness, lightness, heat, coldness, and then cohesion and flowing. So these 12 characteristics you should try to descend through of your body one by one. When he can descend these 12 characteristics one by one through of his body, very, very quickly then he should descend the four elements in sequence, that is the sequence taught by the Buddha. Earth, water, fire, and wind. What is earth? Hardness, roughness, heaviness. Softness, smoothness, lightness. What is water? Flowing in cohesion. What is fire? Heat in cold. What is wind? Supporting in pushing. So according to this procedure, you must try. In other words, that sequence should be cut. Hardness, roughness, heaviness, softness, smoothness, lightness, flowing, cohesion, heat, Goal supporting and pushing. Why? <coughs> For beginners to understand flowing is not easy. Cohesion also not easy. Cohesion means they, they combine three elements together. Without understanding three elements, that is hard uh, hard element. Wind element, earth element, fire element, and yeah? wind element. Then you cannot understand this cohesion as well as flowing. Because of this reason, this upper element, huh? water element is very difficult to disassemble beginners. Because of this reason, from easy to difficult, we teach huh? this system. If you can design every characteristic through of your body, then you must change the sequence according to taught by the Buddha. According to the Buddha's teaching, according to the sequence, if he can design them very, very quickly, his body, one by one, in his body, one by one, in general, Then he will see many or all characteristics together. At that time, it is usually best to take the overview as if he were looking at behind his shoulder. It can also be done as if looking from above his head down. Although this may lead to tension and imbalance of the elements. If it is so, then he must try to make them balance see opposite characteristic. For example, when hardness is very strong, he should emphasize softness and so on. So there are two, two characteristics. Hardness and softness, this is one pair. Roughness and smoothness, this is one pair. Then heaviness and lightness, this is one pair. If hardness is very strong, you should emphasize softness. When roughness is very strong, you should emphasize smoothness. When heaviness is very strong, you should emphasize lightness. In the same way, when cohesion is very strong, you should try to emphasize flowing. When flowing is very strong, you should emphasize cohesion. In the same way, when heat is very strong in your body, then you can emphasize coldness. When your body becomes very cold, other than you can emphasize heat. Then, when supporting is very strong, you can emphasize pushing. When pushing is very strong, you can emphasize supporting. However, for some meditators, pushing is very strong. Although, they may pay attention supporting 
question is still prediction. At the time, when one paper, because of wind, shaking on the table, how you should hang? You should put heavy thing on the paper, then paper will be can save her. In the same way, at the time, when pushing is very strong, you can emphasize hardness, roughness, heaviness. Then pushing will be gone less. This is natural. So because of this reason, we teach all 12 characteristics according to the system of Dhamma Sangani, Vidhamma number one book. Then Dhamma Sangani Buddha mentions this system. According to the Dhamma system, we teach 12 characteristics. However, in many sutras, Buddha teach in art element only two, hardness and roughness only. Why? <coughs> maybe this is, maybe you can say this is very soft. But if you touch parali, then you can feel there is a little bit hardness. Is it true? So, very strong, powerful hardness is called hardness. Less hardness is called softness. So, because of this reason, in so many soldiers, soldiers teach only two. However, in the Wawa, the listeners, they have different ideas because their body is very tender, very subtle. Because of this reason, if both teaches hardness, roughness, hardness, smoothness, hardness, softness, roughness, smoothness, heaviness, and lightness, in this way, if the Buddha teach, they will understand very clearly why their body is very tender and very subtle. According to the listeners' characteristics, Buddha teach six characteristics in earth element, two characteristics in water element, two characteristics in fire element, and two characteristics in wind element. So you must try to discern these twelve characteristics. If he sees all 12 characteristics nearly simultaneously, then he can change into four groups, earth, water, fire, and wind. At that time, he must try to see each and every characteristic clearly and taking these characteristics as objects, he must develop his concentration on those four element objects. As he continues to develop concentration on the four elements and approach excess concentration, Upachara Samadhi, he will see different kinds of light. So you must concentrate on your four elements of that. But if you want to know, you can know. Ah, Wanda, Panya, Wun. Ah, Wanda, Panya, Wun. Ti, Sui, Hua, Ho. Okay? <laughs> so, you should try this repeat again, 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 again. Please concentrate on that four elements of that. When concentration becomes deeper and deeper, then the light of wisdom appears. This is because concentrated mind can produce light. What is the light of wisdom? You penetrate four elements now. This is the penetrative knowledge. This is wisdom faculty. When this wisdom faculty becomes powerful, the light of wisdom appears. What is the light of wisdom? Every consciousness which arises dependent on your heart rate can produce mind bone calapas, mind bone materiality. One mind bone can produce uncountable calapas, subatomic particles. If you analyze those calapas in each calapas, there are eight types of materiality such as earth element, water element, fire element, wind element, color, odor, flavor, and nutritive acid. Is it true? <laughs> okay, so there is hmm? color, color. One color, color, and another color, color combined together 
begin and the wisdom because this kind of begin very bright to bring their own the power of wisdom faculty. When wisdom faculty is very sharp, and the wisdom is very bright. Why with the wisdom faculty begin sharp? To bring their own concentration. The concentrated mind can produce such a powerful wisdom faculty. Samahito Yathamudan Janadi Pasati. This is the focus teaching. The concentrated mind understands the Dhamma as it really is. When the wisdom faculty is becoming powerful because of concentration, then that wisdom faculty produces uncountable mind bone calabas. Among those calabas, the kala begin very bright with their own wisdom faculty. This is one reason. Then there, in each calabas, in each mind bone calabas, there is fire element, dejo. That fire element also can produce new calabas. When concentration is very strong and wisdom faculty is also becoming wisdom faculty also become very powerful, becomes very powerful. At the dying, that wisdom faculty that fire element is called tejo, utu, hmm? temperature. That temperature can produce uncountable subatomic particles, not only internally but also up to externally. Because of this reason, in those clubs, they are also colored, that color also becomes bright. That color also becomes bright. So that color, that brightness, not only internally but also externally, because of this reason, many meditators see light of wisdom here, 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 etc. Actually, the when concentration becomes deep and the current of wisdom is everywhere surrounding a meditator's body. For some meditators, this light of wisdom go very far away. For some meditators, only within one room or maybe within few inches of you, uh, within one room or maybe two rooms or one building, two building, etc. To be their own concentration. When concentration is very deep, the light of wisdom, and the power of wisdom faculty also very, very deep. And then the very strong, powerful wisdom faculty can produce very strong, powerful light. The combination of these two types of kalapa, my bone kalapa, the color of my bone kalapa, as well as the color of temperature bone kalapa, Two types of Kalabas Kala begin the light of question. So with the assistance of that light of wisdom, you must continue to practice four elements meditation. So as he continues to develop concentration on the four elements and approach excess concentration, he will see different kinds of light. To Swan Yogis, it is a smoky gray light. If he continues to concentrate on the four elements in that gray light, it will become white, whiter like cotton wool, and then bright white like clouds, and his whole body will appear as a white form. As he continues to concentrate on the four elements in the white form, it will eventually began transparent like a block of ice or glass. This translucent materiality is the five translucencies for Sanja. The body, body, eye, ear, nose, and tongue translucencies. The body transparency, body translucency is the translucency, transparency. Hmm? Body translucency is found throughout the body in all six sense places, which is why his whole body appears translucent. Hmm? Not transparent, hmm? but translucent. He sees the transparent translucency as one 
translucent form of block. Because he has not yet seen through the three kinds of compactness, compactness of continuity, sanctity, of group, samuva, and of function, kriksha, kana. That translucent body is a group of five pasanta rupa. Pasanta rupa is here, I, translucent element. Here, translucent element. Those translucent element, then translucent element. Body, translucent element. So there are five pasanta rupa, translucent materiality. While practicing four elements meditation, before you are seeing kalapa, other than you can see the whole body like ice block, translucent body. In that translucent body, with the assistance of light of Vajra, if you focus space element, according to the Buddha's teaching in Maha, Rahula, Vata, Sutta, Dadu, Vaganka, Sutta, etc. So, you can see subatomic particles called Kalapa. What is space element? Space element is Kalapantara Parikshita Rupa. To delimine one Kalapa and another Kalapa. Not to mix together. To distinguish one Kalapa and another Kalapa. In other words, this is the boundary of Kalapa. You should try to see this space element. As long as you see this space, you see this space element, space element, then you can see Kalapa. In this case, many Westerners they criticize a lot. Buddha never teach Kalapa to see. In Sutta. Buddha does not teach by the name of Kalapa. It is true in many sutras. However, Buddha teaches in Maharaulo Vada Sutra, Dadu Vibhanga Sutra, and Vidyama Dadu Vibhanga to see space element. In the same way, Venerable Sari Buddha also teaches in his Mahahadi Prabhupada Sutra to see this space element. If you see the boundary of Kalapa, you will see also Kalapa. So they have same meaning. As long as you do not yet see the boundary of Kalapa, this is space element, you cannot see Kalapa. If you cannot see Kalapa, you cannot analyze those Kalapa. If you cannot analyze those Kalapa, you cannot understand Adhimi material. If you analyze these Kalapas, as that, that only you will understand argument materiality such as earth element, water element, fire element, wind element, color, odor, flavor, and nutritive acid. They are argument materiality. However, they are impermanent argument materiality, not permanent. As soon as they arise, they pass away very, very quickly. But you must try to see this impermanent nature. Why? Other than only you will understand suffering and non-self characteristics. If you see impermanent characteristics, then you can see suffering characteristics. So like that. As long as they rest, they pass away, so they are impermanent. They are always oppressed by writing in passing away, so they are dukkha suffering. Again, if you try to see this ultimate materiality, as long as they rest, they pass away. Because of this reason, there is no permanent entity, permanent substance, or permanent self. So they are another no self. At that time only you will understand these three types of characteristics. A nature, dukkha, and another. 
This is the beginning stage of vipassana only. But at this stage, you should not try to contemplate this argument materially as nature to another because your work is not yet finished. So you must continue.